Hello. Hi. <laughs> Can you tell me your name and a little bit about yourself? Um, well, I'm Hallie. Um, I'm from Northern Virginia, which is basically the D.C. suburbs in the United States. Uh, basically the perfect middle of the East Coast. Um, I'm a second year political science major at uh, ICLA, and my specialization is in um, East Asian women's politics. Wow. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up in America? Yeah. Um, I live in kind of idyllic suburbia. If you've seen an American drama, that's probably what my neighborhood looked like. Um, or any just American high school movies, that is what my high school looked like. Um, it was very, I don't know, stereotypically American. Um, lots of people uh, who are very creative and all over the place personality-wise. Lots of things to do, but that are all very far away. Um, but everyone has a car, so it's fine. Sort of, um, you know, you drive half an hour in the summer with your friends to go get ice cream, because that's just what you do. Um, and it's, it was fun, it was a good time. Um, and it's a very interesting place, but very, very different from Japan. Um, and it's kind of completely opposite from the nice, quiet, you know, beautiful mountains we have here where everyone just kind of wants to stay in and relax. Yeah. And what brought you to Japan? Um, well, I started studying Japanese in high school as my foreign language. I took it for four years. Um, and I was also did a, in my high school, you could pick study specializations. My study specializations were global politics and calculus, and I decided I did not like calculus, so um, I wanted to study global politics, and I started looking at international universities, especially in Japan, because I'd already been studying the language for four years, um, and I ended up finding my way to ICLA. And can you tell us a little bit more about your major political science, and what is your specialty again? Yeah, so um, I'm a political science major here. Uh, my specialization is in uh, women's politics in East Asia. More specifically, my research is um, working its way around to why um, women have been kind of politically disenfranchised in East Asia, especially in Japan. Um, for example, in Yamanashi, there is one woman in the prefectural uh, Congress. Um, just one, it is one of the worst prefectures in the country for that. Uh, but I believe it's one of three that only have one. Um, in their body. So my study is why is why did this happen here and what happened to other places? You know, what social movements, what historical events happened to other places that have given uh, women better status in their political situations and which ones could what other situations could or couldn't be replicated in Japan. So for example, last semester I did a paper on why Taisho feminism ended early uh, in comparison to American and British feminism and one of the reasons was because in my belief this is a little, might be a little controversial, that um, when the political crash for the Great Depression happened in Japan um, versus when it happened in the U.S. and the U.K., um, generally politicians in the U.S. and U.K. Blame, had the ability to blame foreigners when it came to you know, someone to push down for why the economy was going so poorly. Um, Japan didn't have any immigration at the time, so if you look at statements from the finance minister from 1929 to 1932, um, they actually did a lot of political attacks against women and how they were spending. Um, I believe finance minister Inoue said at one point that if people believed the government wasn't was overspending, they should check how much their wives were spending, or that the rationalization of the economy would come through the rationalization of the kitchen, things like that, and that kind of dialogue shut down the women's movement completely, which is why it halted in Japan in the late 1920s. Oh, well, that's fascinating. So America had the boogeyman of immigrants or yeah. international people, and Japan had to find a boogeyman. Yeah. I see. That's what, that's really fascinating. When, when you graduate, what do you plan to do? Do you want to expand on this research and become a, an academic, or do you um, want to go into politics? or? Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'm hoping to get a master's degree in um, international relations from where and in what country I'm going to continue my research. Um, I'm still not sure. And, and I think... There, I'm hoping to get to a point where I can decide, you know, where can I be the most helpful in pushing this advancement forward, whether it's sitting around and doing research in a university somewhere in the world, or if it will involve getting into politics or joining the UN or an NGO. Um, I haven't quite decided yet because I still want to do more research and look into the world more to figure out where I can be most helpful and where I need to go to learn more. Wow, that's, that's fascinating. 
Thank you so much, Hamish.